views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, 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 and welcome to a very wintry March. It is quite, quite chilly out today. Um, I think we got more snow in, in March than we have most of the year, so um, welcome to spring in Indiana. Tonight we have, uh, apparently you're all here to see our star, Heidi Malat, do some plein air painting. And it'll be a lot of fun. So you you guys didn't uh, actually come here to see me, uh, watch me talk. So I'm going to hand things over to Hillary to introduce the program for tonight. Hill? It looks nice to see all the seats filled for a change. Wow. Um, our next guest probably doesn't really need an introduction because you all probably know her, but I'm excited to tell you a little bit about Heidi Malott, who's an Indiana artist, and she went to St. Francis and studied uh, visual and communication arts, and then she started in 2006 doing a daily painting, and she's been doing hundreds of them. Talk about having a lot of inventory. Oh my gosh, I thought I did, but hundreds of little paintings that she's done every day since 2006. And that's how she's become such a talent at doing plein air painting because that's her joy. And when you paint outside and you see how the colors change in the natural light and you have to paint quickly to get it down, it really does advance your ability to paint. So um, without further ado, I'm going to give the stage to Heidi Malott. Phone on. I don't know if you can hear me. If I'm talking too quiet, just tell me to get louder. Um, thank you, guys. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> but plein air painting is not for the nervous people. You, well, I started out very nervous painting in public. The first time I did, I was so nervous. I was trying to hide by a tree. And there were a lot of people walking around. <laughs> and when you're doing this, it attracts a lot of attention to some people because they're curious to what you're doing. Um, and I'm open for questions. I can paint and talk at the same time. Um, tonight's just going to be fun. I'm going to paint. Um, just start painting, and I'll talk and answer questions. Um, Saturday will be a lot more um, structured on making sure everybody's um, leaving with uh, a lot of information and a lot of fun and a lot of um, practice trying new things hopefully um, there's always something new to learn I'm still learning and I um, it's exciting so I'm gonna go ahead and get started um, this is my little pasture here with cows uh, the neat thing about um, I started out painting um, from photographs in school and we had models and we had still lifes. Um, I didn't start doing plein air until later in life um, and it is an entirely different animal. Um, how many have plein air painted or at least tried it? How many have not? About half and half. Oh no, just a few. Okay, so um, I don't know. Some people have tried it and they say they'll never do it again and uh, it's it's a sport. It really is a contact sport. <laughs> you, you know, bug bites and uh, people honking their horns and, you know, dogs and it's just uh, a lot going on. What's that? Dropping your painting in the dirt. Oh, yes. Yep. Horses trying to come up and chew on your um, uh, backpack because you have an apple in it. And they, the cows love to sniff at the paint and wonder what you're doing. They're very curious. But I already drew, one thing I've learned, and I still have to remind myself, start with a sketch, sketch something out, because um, how many times have you started a painting and you have to wipe it halfway through because it's just not working, or even at the end, you're just not happy with it, it's just not working. Um, try to solve all the problems with that little sketch, 
And I drew it out, and then if it doesn't seem right, you can even change the lines of the paper and start uh, changing the composition if you need to. But it's always so important to start that um, painting with a sketch so that you have a road map at least uh, to help guide you through. And sometimes they still don't work out, but you're definitely in a, on the right path to start with that um, sketch. So I love nature. I love going out in the fields, and I've been forcing myself to go downtown and do farmer's market and do buildings. Um, they uh, were not my favorite thing to do. All that architecture was very intimidating, and it's amazing. Just practice, 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 and learning that perspective is so important. So I'm just going to start uh, blocking in my painting. I don't do any fine drawing at the beginning because um, there's a lot of paint I need to start flinging. And the details are kind of built up as I go. And I just feel like I'm almost like you're sculpting, especially with oil paint. You always use an underpainting? I do. Um, when I first started working with oils, um, I was painting with Fred Delariso. I don't know, some of you may know him, a lot of you probably. Um, I learned so much painting out in fields and with a group of uh, him and his friends. And when I would paint with him, we would start um, an underpainting and then work more with values where you would have your lights and darks. And over the years, I've kind of been able to figure out my value. Um, as I go, I don't start, like I do my drawing, I block in the darks and then the lights, but some paintings I might get more um, detail with the values, but especially moving people and the sun changing, I, am, I feel comfortable and confident that I can um, start my painting sooner without having too much of an underpainting. The one thing I absolutely love about um, plein air painting is it's taught me how to paint fast because that sunlight is changing so much. And with today's technology, one of the helpful things, once I get my sketch done, take pictures. Take pictures when you first get there. When you find that inspiration, um, take pictures of everything, kind of a 360, but especially what you're painting. Um, just start getting, uh, because it's going to change so much. The clouds might come in, and when you get down to the end of your painting, you're going to forget, where were those highlights? What did that look like? And so if you have that phone, you can kind of refer. It's a, it's a reference tool, and it, it's invaluable, especially if the sun changes or so many times I'll be painting, and a truck pulls right in front of what I was painting and sits there. So. If you have a picture, you can at least try to get um, what was behind that truck and kind of help save your day. You don't want to ruin your day. So if you have questions, just shout out because I, I might skip past some things. And so what do you usually do your underpainting and what colors? Um, I like, now that's a good question because I've heard so many um, artists use different things. Um, my board, I can't uh, stand to start on a white board, especially outside, because it's blinding. And be careful what you wear. Don't wear like a fluorescent orange or a fluorescent yellow. It can shine right. It, it will bounce right onto your um, substrate and affect the whole look of your color. So um, I will tone it down with usually like a medium cad orange. But when I do my drawing, I use um, ultramarine blue and cat, medium cad orange mixed together. It makes kind of a nice, uh, warm, dark, uh, good dark base. So thank you for that question. Now, do you suggest wearing a hat as you're all painting? Does that help you? Yes, that's a very good question. If I don't wear a hat, one thing, don't wear sunglasses if you can prevent it because it can change um, 
the tint in your sunglasses can affect the uh, color that you're seeing. Now I've done it before if it's been really, really bright, but, and I'll just take them off or look over them occasionally to make sure I'm getting the color correct. So yeah, hats are great. And definitely bring that sunscreen and bug spray and water. I usually get a migraine by the time I'm done, especially if I'm concentrating and forget to drink water. I almost always have a headache when I'm done if I'm out painting on a, uh, a big scene. So what time of day do you like to paint the most? That's another excellent question. Um, I love to paint between 9 and, or well, between 8 and um, 10 is, seems to be the magic hour in the morning and then late afternoon w during the golden hour is absolutely fantastic. The times I avoid the most are anything around noon because that sun's so harsh and there aren't any shadows um, and you're painting, it's, you're really struggling with uh, values and you don't have that dynamic of shadows when the sun's straight up ahead, overhead. So now I'm going to go ahead and start in with my color, my paints. And it depends on the subject matter. I've kind of gotten in the habit of painting from the top to the bottom. But I'm going to go back when you said something too. Uh, some artists like to use um, more of like a ochre, yellow ochre. And that's nothing wrong with that. I just got in the habit of using this because it helps me save that step of getting my values in right away. So now, and as you see, I'm kind of using a fairly decent sized brush. Um, sometimes I'll find myself using the same brush the whole time. And I try to at least have two brushes going, one light, one dark, so I'm not constantly cleaning my brush. So I'm going to take some titanium white, and I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. And when you're looking at the sky, especially when you're outside, um, as opposed to a photograph, you're going to notice, um, and I don't know about the lighting in here, what this will look like outside or in other lighting, but um, as you go up higher, looking up higher in the sky, it's always going to be a little darker than on the horizon li line. Actually, can be quite a bit darker. And um, in my photo, you can see um, the sun's kind of shining uh, from the right side, and um, so it, it can be darker from the top and then it can even be different from left to right. There's going to be quite a bit of gradation. And I just realized the photo I used is almost probably a little too close to noon. I've painted this scene so many times in different times of the day, this um, area, that I'm able to kind of over, override that lighting if I need to. Um, I try to stay pretty basic, especially when I'm outside in plein air, because um, it just keeps, uh, if the simpler the better for me. Now, there are times I love to pull out my fancy little colors, my favorite, um, but I just have titanium white, ultramarine blue, medium red cad, orange cad medium, yellow cad medium, lemon yellow, and then my two favorites are the quinacridone rose, I think it's called, and then the, um, oh, and I love cobalt blue. Uh, I just re, re, um, reunited with that color recently, so you're going to see a lot of that in my work lately. And then, um, oh, I think it's like a cobalt teal is another one of my favorites. So I'm just adding a little bit of titanium white as I go. And I like um, bold, I like um, big shapes. I'm not real refined on uh, my oil paintings. I love seeing that um, base coat shining through a little bit. It kind of helps give it some unity with that warm color shining through. I'm going to add a little bit of medium cad orange to my 
uh, blue to give it more of an atmospheric look, a little bit of uh, graying that down a bit. When you're outside painting, you'll be amazed. It can be overwhelming, but it's so important to see the difference from a photograph to kind of like when you're doing a still life. If you're doing a still life and you um, photograph it and look at the photograph as opposed to the flowers or whatever your still life is, you'll be amazed at how uh, the color just isn't there in the photograph. Those colors um, don't transfer well to a photograph. You don't see all the colors in the shadows. So when you're out doing these plein air, even if you just do plein air studies that no one else ever sees, it is invaluable to your studio work. So don't be shy. Go out in your backyard. Um, you don't have to set up and, and paint where everybody can see you. I've even painted in my car on days I don't feel like being in a crowd <laughs> and it's cold out. I'll just set up in the car. Now, then I usually use watercolor or gouache because I don't want the strong um, fumes. And I like to lay it in once and walk away. As you can see, I kind of move along really quickly. I don't want to fuss. Um, I might go back in if I see something major. Usually on a plein air outing, I'll only, if I get back home and I'm like, oh, that perspective's off or um, that needs tweaked a little, I'll of course fix something, but it's usually only about 10%. Because I, I just like recording that moment. There's something, something to be said about recording that moment and the experience and the freshness. There's even usually a gnat or two that fly into the paint or a piece of grass or sand. And so when you're buying a painting, you're buying the, the experience of a plein air painter, I think. And I love it. We tried to go to Florida um, for a while there. We were going almost every spring with the kids. Um, my oldest is 30, I have four kids, and my youngest is 15. He's our caboose, my oldest three are out of the house. But this year, he's pretty upset we're not going to Florida. But um, one of my favorite things is to sit on the beach and paint um, in the sand. But I have many paintings where the sand, bl you're getting sand blasted on a windy day. And there's so much sand in my paintings. Like there's one I just posted I, I think I'm going to post it this week. It might be on my website, but it's, uh, it is like sandpaper and the paint's in it. It's hilarious. I couldn't believe how, and I, I mean, I was chewing the sand while I was painting. It was crazy. But for the clouds right now, I'm uh, taking the same sky color that I had um, and uh, adding some cad medium orange to give a lovely warm gray to the bottom of the cloud because those clouds are reflecting the lovely earth and they're nice and warm and that's one thing when you're painting outside you realize how warm how much warmer everything is as opposed to a photograph so taking that knowledge you can look at your photograph like this and realize it doesn't have to look exactly like that photograph it's um, you're going to tell yourself those clouds are much warmer out there in the real world and that camera is just not doing it justice. So I have learned over the years too to not paint absolutely everything I see, especially with plein air, because sometimes you have to use your artistic license. Uh, the composition might not be great. Like this is kind of heavy, my composition here. This is a little heavy. I've got the big cloud on one side and the tree. So I added another tree over here. Um, some days I do better than others on composition and, and I feel like I'm really getting it together. And then there's days I'm like, oh, Heidi, you knew better than that. But I'm to the age now where I don't get upset about ones. Well, I still do, I'm honest. But some days I'll do a painting that doesn't turn out and one thing about painting smaller, at least it's not some huge painting. Those, of course, you cry when those don't turn out because that's a lot of material and time. But um, the older I get, the less upset I get if a painting's not working out. I, I'm learning that, or I tell myself, sometimes I have to keep telling myself, but I tell myself I learned something. 
I learned something and move on. Don't, don't get hung up. So, all right, now I'm going to kind of clean up my palette a little bit and work on the whites of the cloud and get down into the green. But it's kind of nice, you're working with that blue and then you can use those same colors in your clouds, not jumping around too much, that way um, you feel like you're not wasting too much paint. And I'm adding uh, some more cad orange into my titanium white to give it a lovely warm hue. So do you focus more on value or temperature? I'm hearing a lot of temperature terms. I definitely try to um, work on both. I feel they're both um, very important. I think value is the most important for a strong painting, absolutely. Um, but I'm definitely trying to uh, remember those uh, tones, the, the cool and the warm. And it's interesting when you go out and then you come back in or you look at your work from outside and it's like, wow, the lighting's so different out there compared to my um, studio. But I think you can bring what you learn into the studio. It's very helpful. I'm going to gray down some of these um, clouds because you don't, you need a um, a variety. Not all those clouds are going to be the star of the show. You don't want your uh, cloud that's really shining and, and has um, more of a value shift and, and steals the show that's going off the painting. That would lead the viewer right off the painting. So I know a lot of you guys know this stuff. I'm just trying to think of different things as I paint. <laughs> now, do you have a formula in mind where cool colors receive warm colors? Oh, absolutely, colors? yes. Okay. And atmosphere, you're looking at the atmosphere. Um, when you're outside, um, the further away, the more bluish or gray down. Um, yellow up front, closer to you, greens are going to be much bluer and grayer as they recede. So um, that's that lovely atmosphere and distance that um, makes it, uh, so that's definitely something that's on my mind while I'm painting. I have a yeah. So with that, I don't know a lot about color. So all I have to do is I can I'm sorry, I have bad hearing. I change the I change the temperature and I make it much more vibrant, um, not as grayed down in the foreground, and um, maybe just a little more detail, maybe one or two flowers that you can really see, or a few blades of grass that are um, a lot more detailed. Like let's say you're doing sunflowers, I'm going to do maybe three clusters of sunflowers here, and then in the back just a yellow line. So that really is a change of shape, change of value, change of um, temperature, and grade down. So definitely makes a difference where, um, where you place things. So, and I just realized my little tree back here is too high up. So I'm going to, that's one nice thing. You can change things as you go if you make mistakes. Yes, yep, the top of that tree is a cloud now. And it actually, there's a couple over there. And one thing I always try to remind myself is to step back 
and squint. Lots of squinting. And some, some people don't like the style where you can see the, the orange underneath or maybe a part of my drawing. But to me, I love just diving into someone's paintings um, and seeing their process. You can see their process. You see their brush strokes and you see um, their maybe part of their sketch underneath. Now, some paintings, commissions I do, they're very um, much more detailed, more refined, and I will um, uh, be a lot tighter work. I think the plein air is much looser. Some days almost abstract. You're painting shapes and um, focusing on shapes more than tiny details. Like a portrait would be a lot different for me. I would, um, unless it's a plein air sketch of a person or people walking, those are shapes and I, I don't um, get too tight with detail. So now I'm going to move on down to the lovely greens. I'm going to leave my uh, little pile from the sky because I'll pull from that and help make my little grays, which helps give it uniformity instead of just a totally, look at this, I'm such a mess. I, Hillary, you helped me so much. One day you said, Murphy's oil soap. I got paint from head to toe on this one of these shirts, and I got home hours later and I scrubbed with water and Murphy's oil soap completely came out. Yep. You saved my shirt. Isn't it a miracle? Oh. So there's always new things to learn. I don't even know how I got that on me, but yellow, I haven't even started with that one yet. So if you have any questions, don't be shy. I'm going to start in with my um, trees, the darker trees, and I'm going to start in the background. Those are going to be a lot bluer because they're so much further away. And I'm just starting with my ultramarine and some lemon yellow, some cad orange. And my little formulas don't always work every time. I might have to jump back and add more uh, of this and that and play with it put a little brush stroke on, see what I think, and then adjust it if I need to, or even go back. I don't know why I buy so many brushes. I've used two so far. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so hard on my brushes. One time I treated myself and bought a bunch of lovely rosemary brushes. Those are very nice. They're made in England. and. Nothing against them, I still think they're lovely and they're nice, but I'm so hard on my um, brushes, scrubbing and painting, and, and I think the solvent's hard on them too, and I try to clean them, um, but I've found even synthetic hard, I like firm brushes, but the synthetic work just as well. So I buy the cheaper, I figure I don't buy Lots of different kinds of paint. I mostly mix and um, I just buy lots of, I have cheap brushes and maybe a little more expensive, but I go through them so fast that I just kind of stick with the less expensive. Let's put it that way. Not cheap, right? Nothing's cheap. Now, when you're painting in the summer, would you rather paint in a warm day in the sun? Would you rather paint under an umbrella or in the shade? That's a good question. I, um, you definitely don't want your um, picture, your substrate, in the direct sunlight. Um, to me, I don't have a problem if my paints are in the sun. So it's weird, like my husband's like, what are you doing? You're painting over there, but you're, you've got yourself all turned around. And I'm like, well, the sun can't be shining on this. It's so bright that I can't see what I'm doing and it affects the values and everything. I'm just not able to read it. So I will turn my easel away from the sun and there are times I'll stand under a tree or bring an umbrella and those are very helpful because sometimes you just can't keep moving that easel to get out of that. What's that? Yes, and I do bring a little backpack with a hand weight, a couple hand weights that I hang from the bottom of this. I've had it blown over so many times, and that's just no fun. Now, do you try to point your, your 
canvas so it's pointed to the north? Does north light have any help? Or? Um, it could. It probably could. But I've never really um, concerned myself with it too much just because now the studio, it is nice having that north light, but I haven't noticed a difference when I'm outside painting. Maybe it, it would, but I haven't felt that I've needed to be concerned with the north light. Now I'm just adding a little variation in the, the background. And like I said, I might go back in again and work on it, but I try to get across the whole try to work um, not in one little space the whole time. I do start from top to bottom in most cases, but if I'm working on um, like the whole field, I try to work, start working on the whole field, um, not just one little space. Because if I mix paint and work on one little space, and then I'm over here, it's not uh, going to be as homogenized. Right here, my um, this is this came with my easel. It's the um, this brand is the Gorilla Painter Cigar Box, and I've had it for years, and I'm happy with it. But I'm always open to trying different things because um, I'm not too limited. Like this is a nine by twelve that fits right inside. It's nice. It has storage underneath, and this um, comes out. And it is uh, wood. I'm not sure what kind. It's a hard wood. And when I first got it, I think I oiled it down. And then, because um, uh, it, it was wanting to absorb everything. But now I've used it so much that it has a nice, uh, shiny surface. And then um, the thing I'm painting on is just a, a wood panel. Now, I've used all kinds of different ones. I've used, um, I think they call it masonite. And I sand them and prime them. And then, um, if I think about it, I will put that tone on before I get out. Like for a Kikianga, I try to um, get them all uh, painted down with that um, cad orange just to have that base and they're done. But outside, if I do that wash, they dry instantly. So because it's such a thin wash, I use terpenoid um, solvent with my uh, paint and just wipe down but now at home I have to wait forever it seems sometimes if I don't have a fan or something I'll so I try to get them prepared ahead of time so that they're ready to roll mm -hmm. For your shows, are you allowed to try to put color on before I asked and um, as far as I know uh, gesso sanding and gesso is fine um, I've asked and so far everyone they're okay if you have that um, tone down, but I would definitely ask because you don't want to go to get your substrate stamped and find out that they don't allow you to have that um, base tone. But so far, everywhere I've been, and that's just in Indiana, that they haven't said that was a problem. So, yeah. Um, I really like oil because. I started out in watercolors and still love watercolor. And then I went to acrylic. And I, I liked acrylic, but it dried too fast because it was kind of new. But now I paint so darn fast, I almost wonder if I should go back to acrylic. Because, um, well, especially if I'm painting in my car or something. And then I, wor I do worry about the um, health side of uh, the oils, the, the uh, chemicals that are in them, but I've been painting with oil since 06. I haven't turned back. I'm sorry? Oh. Oh, I use the um, latex, the acrylic gesso. Yep. And you can paint over that with oil just fine. And it dries so much faster. Sorry about that. Hi, Stacia. <laughs> Long time no see. So nice to see you guys. Now I'm just kind of going in um, with the 
darker parts of the tree. I'm using ultramarine and more medium cad orange. Um, I like having, uh, and there are warm and cool shadows, but I kind of start out with the warmer tones underneath. And as you notice too, um, I may not paint exactly what I see. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna put the cows in tonight. We'll see how we're going. See if I feel like I can do it. <laughs> now for us oil painters, you started very thin. Mm -hmm. Do you get thicker on yes. your second and third? <clears throat> Absolutely, yep. I start, I start thick, or thin through thick and usually dark to light. And those um, final touches are my favorite part because they're where you put all those little highlights in and the um, thicker paint. They're just joyful. So now I'm gonna go back in to the farthest back of the field where it's gonna be grayed down and Looks like the sun's shining on it back there. And it's gonna be a lot cooler yellow. And I'm using lemon yellow and my light cad yellow. I'm gonna kinda of gray it down a little bit too. It's a little bit more Cad orange and some more blue because it's just too bright. The farther it away, farther away, especially yellow, it just gets weaker for our eyes to see in the atmosphere. Like I said, going from left to right with your light source, it's going to change too. Even put a little bit of that sky in there. That sky is reflecting off of the grass. And stepping back. I gotta keep remembering to do that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, if you guys are at home, I don't know what it looks like. I'll post it on my website tomorrow. We'll see what it looks like. Wow, that is different. Right. Okay. And I like big, broad brush strokes. That's kind of my thing. Now, when you paint on masonite, does pH play a factor? For longevity? Yeah. Well, with the gesso, I think it makes a huge difference um, priming it. And I can go back and look at the ones I've done 25 years ago, and they look just as good as the stuff that's a year old or so. They hold up really well. And I do paint on um, some surfaces that are like Raymar panels that are canvas adhered to the board, and I like those too. I used to, I used to do that, and then um, the one place I went to stopped carrying the masonite I liked, so I've just been buying, uh, I usually try to stick with the Jack Richeson brand panels because they're made in the USA, and I love keeping everybody here working, so not everything's made here, it's hard to do that, but and I'm just real happy with them because they're thicker, they don't warp. I've had some that were really thin 
and if they warp, that's, that's a shame. Especially the bigger they are, the more likely they are to warp anyway. And that it's bad if you go to frame them. This is kind of a simple little painting. I uh, think I was afraid to do anything too detailed for you guys. I, um, in front of everybody. <laughs> so if you do want to see, like on my website, um, I do try to do little videos. I've got a YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to try to start posting uh, a little more detail. Like right now, they're just very um, short highlights. Okay. So I'm warming up the foreground. And then I'll jump back in and get those trees finished up. Sometimes I pick my own music. Sometimes I let my son pick them because, and those are the ones I'm always embarrassed because it's like, oh, if everybody thinks I'm picking this hip hop stuff that's not my thing, like, you know, or some of it's real fast and hard rock and it's like, I know they know that's not me, but, but no, and he said, my son, he's 14, and he says, Mom, if you want more, um, the algorithms are everything, and if you want more views, um, you've got to pick the hot latest songs, and he'll, he'll pick some, I'm like, oh, no, 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 we can't, I'm drawing my line, we can't play that one, but we'll pick this one. And so um, sometimes I spend a lot of time just trying to find something that works, but some of them are super fun to pick. <laughs> and I don't care about whether or not it's a popular song because it's like, ah, this one goes better with this. Because I do enjoy that. There are times I, I'm sad when I pick something that's just because it's popular. But you want more viewers. You want more people to find your work. and. You gotta do what you gotta do. And I figure if they don't like it, they can turn the sound down. <laughs> and they're only, some of my stuff's only like 10 seconds long. And people don't have an attention span. So, including me, but the, um, I used to do like 30 seconds. And I might try to get back into doing some of those on my YouTube channel. All right, I'm running you right off the page here with this composition, I think I'm going to have to do something interesting over here just to keep you on the page. Yep, that's what I was thinking. We need a little, some bovine over here. I'm going to stick those, I can't get away from painting those cows. I'm going to have to paint them as much as I, I do love them. They're fun little shapes. That's a cow, I promise. We'll fix him later with the palette knife. Palette knife is a lot of fun. I try to incorporate brush and palette knife just to have a variety. And I will start with my bigger brushes and then end with maybe some smaller brushes for fine lines to give it some variety.
work into some of these trees. Am I blocking this painting from everybody? I'm afraid if I go from one side to the other, I'm going to block it. Everybody? And of course, the trees farther away are going to have um, more of a bluish tint to them, not so green. You guys are so quiet. Um, I do jump up to like an 11 by 14 seems to be my happiest space for getting something done in two hours before the sun changes too much. And what I do is even this 9 by 12, if I want to go vertical, I use little baby bungee cords and maybe even some packing tape and stick it or duct tape and kind of tape it down to the back. Um, that's one thing about this. You are limited on the size of 9 by 12, 8 by 10, 8 by 8, 6 by 6 all fit inside of here. But anything larger, I'm going, I have to modify it to um, fit that bigger size. But anything bigger seems to just get frustrating outside. Um, it's doable. I see people that do plein air very large. And maybe if I was doing one once in a while, you might have to go back and revisit the same time the next day for a couple sessions to get it. No, I, I try to paint on location um, as often as I can. There are days I don't feel like it um, and times I don't have time or whatever, but um, I take lots and lots of pictures and I work from my computer screen as opposed to photographs. So like a laptop I'll have sitting up and you can adjust it so much better. The lighting so much better than a photograph. So like tonight, I had to print this off. Um, I probably could have brought my laptop in, but sorry guys, I <laughs> did not do that. I figured that was just too much to haul in. Now, do you ever do a pastel work take that home and do something larger? Or? I'll do, I do watercolor for that, do small studies of watercolor a lot of times and bring it home. Or even um, this one, maybe work a much larger one in the studio and use this for a, um, my color study and on, on location study.
What's that? Oh my gosh. Well, the good thing is my daily paintings all fit in shoe boxes. Um, because when I was in college, I painted huge, and that was awful because to stack it and find places, and I still have a bunch of those in a closet, bigger pieces, but um, I have a shelf probably two-thirds the size of that, sh that um, table, and it has one, two, three um, shelf um, layer levels, and there's probably maybe two, four, six, eight, 16, 24, maybe, oh gosh, like 20, 25 boxes full. And I sell, I mean, I do sell a lot of them, but definitely not all of them. So, and I'm going through some of my older ones and reworking them, and it's such a joy to pull an old painting out and rework it and, and someone finds it and wants it. That's a, it's nice to, save it from the archives, the dark, yeah, the dark shoe box. And I, I use the, what do you call the archival boxes that you buy at um, Michael's to store them in? A shoe box would probably be fine, but I do worry about the, um, like acids from the paint or whatever. Um, so I use the pretty boxes. But they, I, I love that size because when I was raising my kids, I called them my nap time paintings because it's all I had time for, maybe one every couple days or I tried to do one a day. I was for a long time back then when they were little. And um, they're easy to uh, ship because they're smaller and I always tell people they're gift size and you're not handing someone a painting for above their couch you can give mom one for um, Mother's Day just a little painting she can stick on her shelf framed or unframed and then there's people that um, like to buy more than one, they collect them, which is nice, and come back and then buy for gifts too, maybe. So they're a fun little size. They're nice to, that many I have. I mean, I of course have some larger pieces too piled up. That's what I like about the panels though, as opposed to stretch canvas. They take a lot less space. You can stack them pretty high. <laughs> And I usually just put wax paper between them. They work really well. So in 17 years, what are some of the major lessons that you've learned about plein air painting? Methods? What lessons. Lessons. lessons? Lessons? Yeah, what lessons have you learned? Well, safety first. Okay. Safety first. Don't go out somewhere by yourself in the middle of nowhere. Try to come with a friend, a dog, even someone that doesn't paint. Like I had a friend, a mom, that she'd come out and read while I painted. And it was our, we'd do lunch and I'd paint and she'd, she'd read or knit. So, um, and we've had a few close calls, honestly. We've had people drive by and then drive by again, drive by again, and we'd get a little nervous. and. Thankfully, now we have cell phones. Back then, we didn't even have that. So I always, one lesson is to paint close to my car. Um, mainly, too, if I forget something, I don't have to walk forever back to my um, painting location to haul my um, stuff I leave back at the car. Um, you meet a lot of neat people. You make a lot of great connections. Always bring your business card cards or something to give someone that might stop and ask. And um, with today's technology, people don't want to carry a card, so I put my information on the back of my um, uh, Pushad box and say, just take a picture of it, and that way you have my information. Um, 
and I've learned to be able to talk and paint and not necessarily make eye contact. I try to, but I, um, I'm able to focus. It's weird. I feel like I can multitask much better because of it. Um, and uh, people want to tell you about their experiences, and you meet some really interesting people. And there are times some people get too close, and they talk too long, and, you know, it's just part of it. But I just stay polite and, and finish up. But I'm usually only in a location from uh, two hours max. It's amazing how much I can get done. I feel like I'm there for three hours, four hours, and I look at the time, and I'm like, how did I do that so quickly? It's only been two hours. But it's definitely made me paint faster and not sweat the little things. It's helped me experiment, I think. All right, I'm gonna go in with my little bitty baby brush and put some different lines in. Maybe a there's a fence line here. You definitely need that ver variation of brush strokes and um, size brush helps. Um, the big brush keeps me from sweating the details, especially when I first start. But like I'll go back in and try to refine like maybe the tree trunks. And plein air paintings um, help me loosen up my work. If you're trying to loosen up your work, this is one definite process that helps that. I felt like I was trying to loosen up my work for years on end. And some days I still get too tight with my work, too detailed, too caught up in the details. And there's a fine balance, you guys know. And then you feel like some days you forget how to paint. Like today, I'm kind of nervous. But it's made me not be as shy. Like, I'm not super shy. I think most artists were happy by ourselves for weeks, days, months on end. <laughs> I'm a, I, I love being social and having, um, getting out and seeing you guys, but I also, I'm a very um, content person to be. So plein air, you're definitely outside of your comfort zone. You're outside of your, the whole world's there. I mean, people are walking by, and it's funny. Some people are curious. Some people ignore you and just keep going and, and don't know what you're doing, don't care. That's fine. And then there's people that are curious, and they want to stop and talk, and it's great. Um, but it's also hard because you're like, oh, sometimes I'll even say, um, because I'll never forget painting with Fred. We were all out painting. I mean, we're talking Fred Del Riso. You know his work. Some of you may know him. And, and he's painting, and we're all in the ugly stage of the painting. And um, these young teenagers walked by in a park, and they started laughing and, and walked on. And, you know, because you're at your ugly stage. And then we started laughing. And it's like, come back. We promise it'll look different. And sometimes I'll even hand my little business card to a family that's there, and I'm like, um, here, check it out online later. Um, it'll look totally different. You'll be surprised. These are kind of the under painting. This is the start, starting stage. And so, because people think it's, you know, if it's not a masterpiece from the first paint stroke, uh, they're, they're going to move on and snicker. So it's not for the faint of heart for that. You definitely got to let that stuff roll off your back. So I'm just kind of going in and and refining a few things. I don't want to do too much. Kind of playing around with the colors I already have on my palette.
All right, we're going to give these cows some a little more shape and some highlights from the sun shining on their backs, their hide. They're pretty awesome. They have so many planes on them. But these are blobs. These are little blobs, but they'll still have some some planes. Another thing I've learned while I'm out painting, you don't have time for details, so you're def I definitely focus on shapes more, which helps with my studio work. To paint what I'm actually looking at, not what my brain's telling me. Does that make sense? The struggle is real, isn't it? So there's a lot of cool shadows and warm shadows on the cows. And it's fun because um, I also see paint, painting outside, you realize what a variety of grays um, there are and how much color are in those grays that you just don't see in a photograph. So even if you don't want a plein air paint, you guys are artists and when you're driving, you're looking at things outside, um, you're noticing things that you probably don't even realize and that it helps you when you're in the studio. Helps all of us, the things that we, I think we're keen observers, aren't we? How are we doing on time, Hillary? Okay. Okay. Oh no, I'm. I'm thinking I'm. Don't want to beat the dead horse. <laughs> the dead cow. Yeah, raw hide. <laughs> okay. We'll throw some fence line in. And it looks like there's all kinds of pretty little wildflowers there. I think I'm going to throw those in the foreground. And I've learned, like this white fence, I'm going to go in with kind of a dark color first and then add the light color because they just kind of get lost. That way you're not playing around trying to put that shadow in later kind of there already with that dark color. When I went to oils, I was so leery because I remember back in the day raising three kids at the time and stay-at-home mom. I used to be a dental assistant for years, and then I went into admin work, and the kids were pretty much stair steps. It was boom, 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 and I was a stay-at-home mom, and I was very grateful for that for quite a few years. And I forget where I was going with that. 
<laughs> something about oh yeah um no well, no i did forget hmm might come back what was it oh the price of oils i was leery of moving on to oil paint because it just seemed back then and it's they're all expensive now i think but I just knew it was so much more expensive, and I really was like, I can't do that. I, I'm um, painting now. You know, I want. I was doing a lot of watercolors at the time, and but when I met Fred and started painting with him, um, I had just learned oils. So I was trying to figure out oil, and figure out plein air at the same time. That was a lot, but um, I didn't realize how little. I mean, it goes far. It goes farther than you think, and. The one thing I did learn to do is definitely, I mean, I started out with student grade, but when I went to start selling my work, I wanted it to be something that was gonna last longer. And, and so I am spending a little more, but the, the more expensive oils that are true hues go further, um, are much more effective. You're not um, pouring in your yellow to get bright yellow. It's already very, very bright and vibrant to begin with. So it seemed a little more economical than I imagined. Like I'm not buying, I don't paint large though. I guess if I'm painting larger, it's definitely gonna go faster. Now I'm thinking about shapes, like of the trees and stuff, um, kind of going in and making sure um, they're not all the same. Maybe adding a couple limbs, giving it more variation. Because you kind of feel like you're running a marathon to capture all that subject matter, and then trying to capture all the light and color changing, light changing, colors changing because of it. So then when you're done, you kind of go back in. It's like frosting the cake with the fun part of um, checking everything, making sure it's working. and stepping back. Now when I'm outside, I find myself looking, painting, looking, painting, looking, painting. Here, when I'm working on a photograph, I tend to just work on the painting and not look enough at the, because there's not enough to look at, honestly. So with all those details out there, um, I feel like I'm always getting just a little better um, representation painting from life because um, there's more to see. Now, the same thing is it's overwhelming, <laughs> way overwhelming when you get outside and you're painting. That's why I try to um, think of the large shapes, squint a lot, Maybe even turn your photograph that you just took while you're there with your phone into black and white with a filter. That's very helpful. Um, it's not cheating, it's a tool, I think, because it's just like a photograph. You know, you might change it to black and white so that you can study those values and squint and make sure the composition and the shapes and all that um, are working. But getting overwhelmed because there's so much to record that's when you pick and choose and you'll get better at it. You know how um, when you first learn to drive a car, someone told me this and it was such a good um, way to look at it. When you first learn to drive a car, you're thinking of everything, the seat belt, the keys, the, the shift, you know, shifting it into gear and your mirrors and where everybody's at. Now you're driving and you think, oh my gosh, did I run that red light? Because I'm just driving, you know, I'm an autopilot. And you kind of 
the more you paint, the more you get into autopilot. And you, um, not detrimentally, like I think you just, um, you learn to focus on the big things and not sweat the little details and you're not as overwhelmed. So give it a try again if you've done it and you feel like, oh, I don't like it at all. Maybe paint smaller when you're out there um, or start with a sketchbook and just sketch first. So be easy on yourself, but definitely don't give up because it's worth it. It's just, um, it can be intimidating, but just take little bites. And you don't have to start with a huge painting. It's worth it. And even if you don't want to show anybody your plein air work, it's still such a great exercise. And plein air to me counts sitting in a screen porch painting your backyard or sitting in your window and painting the snow outside. That's, that's plein air to me because you're painting, I mean, I love being out in the thick of it, but that's still, you're still looking at a live thing, kind of like a still life. So those count. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Yep. Thank you. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne. Learn more under the Explore tab at acpl.info.